I'll start with the first poem in the book, which is called Bird. When I became a bird, Lord, nothing could not stop me. The air feathered as I knelt by my open window for the charm. Black on gold, last star of the dawn. Singing, they came. Throstles, Jenny Wren. Jack squalors swinging their anchors through the clouds. My heart beat like a wing. I shed my nightdress to the drowning arms of the dark. My shoes to the sun's widening mouth. Bed. I found my bones hollowing to slender pipes. My shoulder blades tufting down. I spread my flight greedy arms to watch my fingers dueling like ten hummingbirds. My feet callousing to knuckly claws. As my lips calcified to a hook to kiss. Silent. Then an exaltation of larks filled the clouds. And in my mother's voice chorus. Take flight, chick. Go far for the winter. So I left girlhood behind me like a blue egg and stepped off from the window ledge. How light I was, as they lifted me up from Wren's nest, bore me over the edgelands of concrete and coal. I saw my grandmother waving up from her fold, loot the infant school and factory, let the zephyrs carry me out to the coast. Lunas I flew, battered and tuneless. The storms turned me inside out like a fiore. There wasn't one small part of my body didn't bore. Until I felt it. At last, the rush of squall thrilling my wing, and I knew my voice was no longer words but song, black upon black. I raised my throat to the wind, and this is what I sang. From one little pigeon <coughs> to another, um, this poem's called Birmingham Roller. And the Birmingham Roller is a brilliant kind of fancy pigeon that's originally bred in Birmingham, the Black Country. Hence it's a very glamorous name. <laughs> um, and the Roller's a tumbling pigeon, which means it performs this brilliant trick. When it's flying, it suddenly stops mid-air and starts somersaulting backwards and down. And just when there's this awful moment that you think it's going to fall out of the sky, it swoops back up in spectacular style to doing the rest of the birds in its kit. And as soon as I saw the roller in action, um, I just knew it was a perfect symbol, not only for the area, but more specifically its language. This really ordinary, grey looking bird, hiding a really fabulous trick under its wing. The poem's written using that country dialect, but probably the only word that's really useful to know is the word Donny in the last line, and a donny is a hand, especially a little child's hand. Birmingham Rowler. We spent our lives down in the blackness. Those birds brought us up to the light. Jim Shell, tumbling pigeons in the black country. Wench. You're the colour of our town. Concrete, steel, oily rainbow with the cut. There were streets and in your wings. 
there were factory chimneys plumes on your chest your hearts the china our old girls dust in their tranquilment cabinets bread to dazzling backyards by men whose arms grew soft as feathers just to touch you to cradle you from egg through each jet defying tumble little acrobats of the terraces when wind when we gaze at you jimmicking the breeze somersaulting through the white breath prayer of january and rolling back up like a baby's yo-yo caught by the open donny of the clouds this poem's called stone and i always think it's a real uh, a real black country man's love poem um, although i'm very sad to say it is a true story but it can't be all bad because um, we're still together <laughs> stone when you bought me a milk pan for Christmas, a woman at work said you were as romantic as a stone. Watching you that evening, I wondered what stone she'd meant. A chip of car park gravel? Or something fancier? Like the peridot in my mother's engagement ring? What interesting you became geological, pulling on your wellingtons to walk the dog in the rain, you were granite, durable, funereal almost, under bathwater, you were the agate found on Brighton beach as a child, sleek and mottled as seal skin, other times, you seemed a rare gem, not emerald or topaz. Nothing any other woman would wear at a throat, but plainer, more lovely. Like the limestone wall in the caverns back home, that purified the iron in blast furnaces, where keepers drip jet from their beading brows. And a man like that would never choose a rose or a diamond ring. He'd stand for hours in a shop on the coldest day, testing the unfamiliar weight of a pan in his hand, assessing its metal, imagining how the milk would taste on my tongue as it poured, steaming from that perfect lid. This next poem is called Sow and I wrote it after I caught a girl in the changing rooms at the swimming baths who I think thought she was by herself in there stepping onto the scales and <coughs> saying to herself in this really awful pained voice you fat Pig. And, and my heart just hurt for her, I couldn't stop thinking about her and I think perhaps because I'd probably been that girl too, I wanted to go home and, and write a poem that would transform her and me and that whole awful feeling into something incredibly naughty and saucy and rebellious, a, a little sigh that could stick up all its trotters at any such, any such notions. So oh, here she is, the little sow transformed. So, dainty footwear turns a young lady into an altogether more beautiful creature. Eliza Sell, etiquette for ladies. Trottering down your road in my new ooze. I'm farmyardy sweet. Fresh from the filth of straw and swill. The trendy legs sniff of the slaughter wagon. A guzzler. Gilt. 
trollopy and canting. Root your tongue beneath me frock and gump with the brute stench of the sty. I've stopped denying myself, nibbling grateful as a pet on baby leaves, a fiat of the glutton of belly and rump. I've sunk, and when lads hold out apples on soft city palm, I guttle and spit, for I need a man with a body like a trough, a tumbly slop to bury me snout in. All them saft years of hiding a town. Them prancing like a pony for some sod to bridle and shove down the pit. Shying away from his dirty fists. All them nights. My eyes rolling white in the dark. When the sow I am was biting and squaling to get out. No Monday scupper me, no fancy ass beats. If I've kicked the fence and I'm roiling on me back in the muck, how to me mind with grunting pleasure? Trotters pointing to the heavens like chimney pots, sticking me to the cockerel, prissy and crowing on his high church spire.